morning, I just want to say a, a huge, huge thanks to all of you who have uh, dropped notes of encouragement to us for our upcoming move uh, to pastor this uh, Luster Evangelical Mennonite Brethren Church up in Luster, Montana. And uh, just so thankful for all of those notes. Man, they've just been such an encouragement. Thank you so much. And also thanks for all the likes and the views that take place on on some good seeds. I appreciate all of you doing that. It's just a huge blessing. And pray pray that this is this is the time for you as an encouragement. I I just believe so much in the importance of us being in the Word on a regular basis, hearing from God in His Word. He has chosen to reveal Himself through His Word, and the more we spend time in the Word, the more we see of His nature and His character. And as a result of that, we love Him more because of His love for us. So I want to encourage you in that again this morning. Be in the Word. Amen. Well, again, thanks for all the prayers. Boy, I appreciate that. We are in the process of, of packing again and uh, uh, downsizing because, uh, well, we just have accumulated too much, <laughs> too much stuff. So anyway, uh, pray for us as we continue to do this process over the next few weeks. This coming Sunday, the 24th of September, will be our first Sunday there. And we're looking forward to that. We'll do be doing a little back and forth over the next few weeks until we finally are there settled in the first part of October. So anyway, rate, that's the kind of the update. Uh, but let's get to the word this morning. Uh, Daniel chapter 5 and 6, Psalm 130 and Luke chapter 3 are the passages. And our reading today, the, the seed that I want to plant is in, from Luke chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Uh, John the Baptist is quite a figure as we read through the New Testament and, and uh, see the ministry that he had. Of course, uh, naturally speaking, he was Jesus' cousin and uh don't know what kind of interaction they had before uh, John began to preach, came on the scene and began to preach this word of uh, repentance and baptize people and, and all of those things. But boy, uh, here he is in camel hair with a leather belt and uh, uh, boy, w w quite a, uh, an unusual character. Uh, but boy, the word that he speaks is so powerful. And, and really what he says is that his, uh, his message is one of the coming of the Messiah. So it's such a powerful prophetic word from John, and uh, it speaks of the present situation. I baptize you with water. That's right now. He also speaks to the prophetic future. There is one coming, and also to the penalty of unbelief in verse 17. The present situation was that John was the forerunner of the coming Messiah. He was preaching a baptism of repentance and, and preparation for the coming Messiah, which was his prophetic message. Uh, the problem was that the people didn't believe that he was coming uh, in the future, well, that Jesus was coming, but they saw his coming being uh, the deliverance from the bondage of Rome. They wanted to get out from underneath that, and, and, uh, but they didn't believe that he was the one, uh, because of the, the, the religious leaders didn't believe that, because they didn't believe that, they crucified him. They didn't see... Uh, the two mountains of his first coming and his second coming. And they didn't understand the, the first mountain that, that John was preaching about coming here uh, as the one who's going to deliver the nation. But they, they didn't see that, <clears throat> that that deliverance was in the future when uh, soon, I believe very soon, that Jesus is going to come back and set all those things right. For the, He's not through with Israel, is basically what we're saying. But uh, the separation that would take place comes as a result of unbelief, those who did not believe um, from that time until this, those will uh, suffer separation from God for all eternity and spend eternity separated in, in hell. And uh, that's not a, a great thought to even spend any time thinking about, but it's true. And the reality of it is there. What does it take? Well, we need to recognize our need, repent of our sin, and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And if we have done that, then we have a glorious future in store for us. Praise the Lord. So thankful for that. I pray the Lord will richly bless you today as you spend time in the Word, hearing from the Lord, 
Let him speak to you through his word and be blessed in that. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today, I pray.